Hello everyone, I am Dr. Maria Espinola and I am a clinical psychologist. In this channel, I share wellness tips in English and Spanish. One of the reasons I created this channel was to help people cope with the stress related to the pandemic. And I think one of the best ways to cope with that stress is to gain information from trustworthy sources. That's why I invited Dr. Moises Woman and Jaina Horner to speak to us about the COVID-19 vaccine. Now I am going to let them introduce themselves. Well, my name is Shana Horner and I work at the University of Cincinnati as a clinical researcher. I'm a coordinator on the Moderna vaccine trial. Yeah, and well, my name is uh, Moises Waman. I'm a, a clinician and infectious disease doctor and also a clinical epidemiologist. And I have the pleasure of working with Shana in the same team. We're part of the, uh, we, we are the part of the infectious diseases research unit within the uh, Department of Internal Medicine at uh, University of Cincinnati. I'm one of the co-principal investigators for uh, our uh, operation. And uh, I'm originally from Peru. I've been uh, in the States for uh, close to 15 years now uh, and uh, working with uh, our patients and community, uh, helping with uh, problems related to infectious diseases uh, in general, and uh, now very focused on uh, helping and responding to the COVID pandemic. Thank you so much for everything you're doing. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about how did you become interested in, in pursuing a career in infectious diseases? Yeah, so infectious diseases were not something I had a background in, um, but in when COVID hit, I felt like there's just so much that's outside of our control, so much that uh, we don't know and people feel really overwhelmed and powerless and for me, um, I was excited about the opportunity to help be a part of the solution. And so uh, seeing that the Latino community was being hit very hard by COVID and already being a person who cared about those dis uh, disparities in health, uh, it felt like a really natural way for me to get involved. And so um, I did the community health research and then got involved with the study for the vaccine because I really wanted to help be a part of finding a solution. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, and for me, it's also uh, a, a way of uh, helping people in our community fighting uh, infectious diseases. Infectious diseases in general are a large cause of uh, morbidity and mortality worldwide. Uh, and the good thing is that uh, we have ways to prevent many infections. And now with vaccine development, uh, we're, we're hoping that that's going to have a great impact on what is going on with the COVID pandemic. Uh, we also have uh, great therapeutics for a number of infections. And that's what I like from the infectious diseases field. But most of the times when you can uh, identify the right uh, pathogen, the right infection that uh, that could be going on, then you can uh, you can start the right treatment, and most of the times uh, patients will get better. Uh, and from a public health and epidemiology perspective, also uh, the uh, ability to uh, understand the mechanisms of how infections are transmitted from one person to the other or different ways of acquiring infections from the environment or other ways and trying to stop that chain of transmission so we contribute to the public health is something that has always been a passion for me. The FDA just uh, released what we call an emergency use authorization. Uh, so this is very exciting times. Uh, we now have a vaccine that we can start uh, and, and the, the implementation efforts have been already in place for the, for the past few weeks and months really uh, nationwide and globally. So we're very excited about uh, these initial steps uh, that hopefully are going to help us bend the curve and get this pandemic under control. This is a very, very important step toward um, us getting out of a pandemic. Um, but 
even with uh, multiple vaccines available, we're talking about the whole world, right? So there are a lot of people that need to be vaccinated in order for us to, to come out of this and really see, see that change in the curve that we would like to see. Um, and it just takes time, but we are starting as quickly as possible. And um, hopeful that as more people have access to the vaccine, that situation will improve quickly. Yeah, and I will echo uh, that. Uh, it's hard to predict what is going to happen. If you ask me, I'm hopeful that 2021 is going to look much better than 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, we're starting to uh, develop uh, pre good preventive strategies, uh, some therapeutic strategies for people who unfortunately get sick uh, outside of the hospital, inside of the hospital, we're trying different things. And uh, just remind the population that it's still very, very important to follow the recommendations that we have from CDC and other agencies, the social distancing, uh, the using wearing their masks, uh, washing their hands, all that is going to be very important. None of that is going to change in the next few months, so keep doing that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And can you tell us a little bit more about uh, your work with the Moderna trial? Yeah, so we started, our first vaccinations were in August, and uh, we have about 185 participants at UC, but there are 30,000 nationally. Um, our site specifically wanted to make sure that we included people with health disparities and um, and so we have a very diverse group of people, um, age-wise, race, nationality, um, health conditions, and we're very proud of that, that so many people in Cincinnati volunteered to participate in this study and help us see if these vaccines are effective and if they will be effective for everyone. Um, the Moderna trial itself is two years long, so we're through the, the first section, which is the, the vaccinations, and now we're continuing to monitor people. So we've seen that the vaccine for Moderna is effective, as you've seen in the news, and um, we are going to continue to follow people for the next two years to see um, how long that protection lasts. Thank you. And can you talk about the effectiveness of the vaccine? And what's the difference between the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines? Yeah, sure. I can uh, speak some about that. Uh, the overall, uh, Moderna and Pfizer have shown very similar uh, effectiveness. In, uh, it's uh, around 95% effective, uh, both of them. Uh, the trials have been large trials for Moderna. Uh, Shana was talking about 30,000 plus people and for Pfizer, more than 40,000 people. Uh, and so far, that's the, uh, the rate of effectiveness that we're getting. Uh, now, in terms of differences, um, both of them are uh, relatively similar in the way how they have been designed and work. Uh, these are novel vaccines that are based on a technology uh, that is called uh, uh, messenger or mRNA uh, and that allows uh, the body, uh, uh, the cells of the body to present particular pieces uh, or a particular piece of the virus uh, that is uh, very important to present to our immune system so we can develop uh, protection when we actually see, when we're actually exposed to the real uh, virus. So um, this is an, an R uh, RNA vaccine uh, and uh, the trials show so far an overall 90% uh, effectiveness. Another yes. difference is the Moderna vaccine is two vaccines one month apart and the mm -hmm. Pfizer vaccine is two vaccines three weeks apart. Um, so their protocols are just slightly different. Um, as Dr. Woman said, the mRNA vaccine, part of what's really exciting about it is um, the way that, so with uh, other vaccines, flu vaccines uh, that have been around for decades, right? They're introducing um, a portion of, of uh, the protein for a virus um, and your body comes in contact with it and builds immunity. The mRNA, the way that this is different is that it actually is catalyzing your own cells to produce this protein. So when you look at the, the pictures of the virus, you see all the red dots around the outside, those are the spike proteins. Mm -hmm. And so the mRNA is actually like a little recipe for that spike protein. And so your own cells develop the protein 
it's not introducing the protein specifically. It's that your cells in, create that protein, and then your body has an immune response to something your own cells have created to learn how to protect against this virus. And so um, it's a it's a new and exciting way of creating vaccines. Um, one that there's been a lot of research coming up to this, which is part of what's made this able to happen so quickly, is that there's been a lot of, of research in the past decade um, around vaccines that have, have led to this happening really quickly. Um, but it's an exciting thing. Um, and important for people to understand because of the way that this uh, vaccine is created that there is no risk of getting COVID. It's impossible to get COVID from this vaccine and if they have any secondary effects. Those effects are not contagious. Mm -hmm. but, uh, can you expand on that on the secondary effects? Yeah, so but with any vaccine, there are normal effects that, that can happen. Um, you know, for me, like with a flu vaccine, which I get every year, some years I have no reaction and other years I do, right? Um, this year I had a little bit of a headache for a couple of days. I had a little bit of nausea. Um, other years it's nothing. So for the, these vaccines, they function very similarly. You could have uh, some pain at the injection site, some fatigue, a headache, maybe a little bit of elevated temperature, some nausea. Um, some chills, those kind of things can happen um, as the body's natural way of building an immune response, right? So it comes in contact with something that starts to build antibodies, and that's how our bodies were made to react um, so that it can build immunity. And I think that can be confusing for people sometimes because they see those things and they think I'm getting sick or I'm getting sick with this virus. And that's not what's happening. It's the body's natural immune response system. And so what we've seen in the vaccine trial is those kind of reactions um, are happening for maybe a couple of days. And then um, some of them, are, they're all mild, some of them moderate, but most people have been able to continue to go to work, continue to do their normal daily activities, and any um, reactions they've had have resolved within a week of that initial vaccine. So we've been very pleased with that response. Um, you know, people need to be able to continue to work. And uh, the, you know, what we want to see is a vaccine that's effective with minimal reaction. And that's what we've been seeing so far, which is really exciting. Excellent. Dr. Waman, more comments regarding side effects? Uh, yeah, I think that Shana explained this very well, just to highlight that uh, most of these uh, effects after the vaccine is given are mild, uh, if they happen, uh, sometimes moderate, uh, but they go away. Uh, they usually take a day, two days, maybe a little bit longer, but they go away. There's usually no need to uh, intervene uh, on, on those symptoms. Most of the times we're talking about local symptoms, such as uh, pain at the injection side, which is usually given in one of the arms, like when you get the flu shot, that sometimes happens, right? You may take a dose of uh, Tylenol or Motrin, one of those over-the-counter uh, painkillers, and that may help. Uh, but yeah, that, that's uh, much of the extent of, of what we have seen. Um, uh, and as uh, Shana uh, mentioned, uh, just highlight that uh, it's not that the vaccine is uh, giving you COVID, it's not that you're getting COVID in the vaccine. Uh, this is a natural, natural reaction of your body when you are building that protection, trying to react to the vaccine. So in a way, we actually expect some of those uh, effects. So we know that your body is reacting against uh, uh you know the, or the, that is reacting and making the uh, immunity uh, against the virus excellent and can you tell us is the covid vaccine something that we're gonna have to get every year like we do with the flu vaccine we don't know yet, and that's part of what we're studying. So we've seen from this initial phase that the vaccines are effective. What we are still studying for the next two years is how long that immunity lasts, right? So um, we don't know whether we'll need to get a vaccine every year. There are other vaccines you get a booster every 10 years. It's just hard to know, but that's why these research studies are so important. And that's why we're not just doing the injections and then moving on, but we will continue to, to follow the participants for years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And can you tell me why why is it important for minorities uh, to participate in the clinical trials? 
I think one reason is because the minority communities are being hit very hard by COVID. And so we need to find how to help those communities and them being a part of that process is really important. I think just with anything, right? If it's something new, having someone you know that's been a part of it uh, can help increase your confidence. So having people from those communities who have participated, who can speak to their experience, who can speak to what their side effects were like, um, can help increase the confidence in the community to receive a vaccine and and it's also important because we need to know if this vaccine is going to work for everybody this is a global pandemic so we need people from every culture and every country to be participating people from different health risks and um and economic risk situations um their health health outcomes are different so we need to know that this vaccine is going to work for everyone and that's why it's so important to us at uc that we have such a diverse population in our study excellent there's one question i have uh, so when the person participates in the study, are, are they told at any point that they, they, if they receive the vaccine or the placebo? And I'm asking in the sense of like, what if this person, I know that you have to keep that like private, confidential for, for a certain amount of time. But what if like that person wants to get vaccinated or wants to um, in the future, how long will that person have to wait? That is a great question. It's one that I'm hearing every day when I talk to my patients. Now that we're at this place where emergency use authorization is in process, they're all asking. Um, and what I can say is Moderna has said, I can't speak for other trials. Moderna has said that, um, that they have a, a moral obligation to provide the vaccine to people who have volunteered and have received the placebo. Um, it is the intention at some point in the study to unblind. As you said, it is a blinded study. So half of the people received the placebo, half received the vaccine. None of us know who got what, right? So um, at some point they do plan to unblind. We don't know exactly what the timing of that will be. We don't know exactly what the rollout of providing that vaccine to placebo participants is, but that is the intention of the study, but we don't know the timing around that yet. Dr. Waman, can you talk a little bit more about the misinformation that is out there regarding the vaccines? Uh, well, these uh, days with uh, social media and so much information that is out there, uh, we just have to make sure that we are gathering the information and making decisions uh, based on uh, sources of information that uh, have uh, that, 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 that have proven information, right? And what we can tell you right now, we have been talking about that uh, during uh, this interview, is that so far, uh, these vaccines that are coming out uh, and that are being evaluated by the FDA uh, seem to be uh, safe and uh, they are showing uh, to be effective in protecting against uh, COVID disease. So. Uh, I think that, that that's the most important message. That's the reason why uh, we just had the uh, emergency use authorization for the Pfizer vaccine. And it's going to be very important to get to the implementation phase. So for uh, our uh, audience who are uh, joining us, I will strongly recommend you to get the vaccine. If you, if whatever vaccine that is going to be available, uh, if you have the opportunity uh, to get it, depending on uh, where in the phase of the implementation we are, uh, my recommendation as an infectious diseases clinician and clinical epidemiologist will be for you to get the vaccine uh, for your own protection and to try to develop an, a, a global a community uh, level of immunity and protection. So I think that that's going to be very important. The vaccine is going to be something voluntary, uh, but uh, based on the medical knowledge and scientific knowledge that we have, I will definitely uh, encourage uh, our friends and community, our people who are listening uh, to uh, go ahead and, and get it. Excellent. I would also say that, um, you know, it's normal for people to have fear about things that they don't understand, right? And so it's part of why it's so important for us to have these opportunities to help educate people. And COVID has offered us more hardship than, than gifts. But one of the gifts of COVID is this opportunity for there to be such transparency about vaccine research. It's something that most people don't know or understand because it hasn't always been as transparent. Um, and so 
for people to start to understand how these trials work, to be, for people to be asking these questions about, um, you know, how effective is the vaccine and what these percentages are. I love that that's happening. People are trying to educate themselves and understand, and it's important. And so, um, you know, when they hear something in the news, when they don't understand how these work, it can be frightening, right? You hear um, about the, um, the event that happened with AstraZeneca, for example, and people all then sudden said, oh, these aren't safe, we shouldn't do this. And I think instead of being afraid, it was actually really encouraging to me because I think it highlights what's so important about this research, which is we have all of these processes in place to make sure that we're protecting our participants when we do this research. We want to know if these vaccines are safe and effective, and if they're not, we're not gonna do them. And so when there's one person in a study who has a reaction or some sort of adverse health concern, the study pauses and we do an investigation to find out, even just for one person, was this related? You know, for people, they have their own health issues and things happen that may or may not be related to the vaccine. And so we need to find out, was this related? Was this not related? And we don't want to put other people at risk. And so the fact that occasionally there have been things in the news, which for these vaccines have been very minimal, um, but there are things in the news, uh, that people question and have concerns about, for me, it's really encouraging because I think it, it's teaching people about this process and how important it is to us that we pause and that we make sure that people are safe as in contrary to I think what people sometimes believe.